I make thousands of dollars every year going to thrift stores. Today, I'm behind the gaff with Jason. I'm going to tell you three tips I keep in mind every time I go to a thrift store that can help you make money there as well. Thanks for watching Behind the Gavel with Jason today. I'm Jason Morosky, the owner of the KC Auction and Appraisal Company here in Kansas City, Missouri. And, and we're excited to bring this series to you every week. I'm just going to share this on my page real quick. Share, right post, share now. All right. So we all know what thrift stores are. It's where we donate the things we don't want in our life anymore. Uh, they put them out, they sell them, they make money for a cause or for themselves, whatever is important to them. And there's opportunities there to make a lot of money. And I do that regularly. I'm almost, I stop a couple of times a week. Uh, I used to stop every day, several times a day. And I make still make thousands of dollars every year based upon those stops at thrift stores. And there's a couple of things that are really important to keep in mind and to do when you're, you know, you're going to thrift stores. The first is to go regularly. Yeah, I talk to people all the time, so I never find things at thrift stores and I ask how often do they go and they say, well, maybe once every couple of months. You're never going to find anything doing it that infrequently because there are, you know, the, the, the turnover at thrift stores is daily. They bring out thousands of items every day. You know, if you can go every day at a set time, you'll figure out what you just you'll have a, you increase your odds not not seven to one based upon going every day as opposed to once a week. You increase your odds more than that because the more you go, the more the people in the store understand what you're looking for, and they kind of know what you're looking for, and so they'll tell you, "Hey, I saw you bought something like this last week. We just put out something like that over here." So your odds increase. You also start to get, understand the store better. You understand the pricing better, and you understand where they put specific things. And so you'll find out that they put the textiles in one area, and they might have a rug in the, in the blankets because it's a small rug, but it's still a hand-woven Native American rug. I remember years ago, I stopped at a thrift store in Virginia, and hanging with the bath mats and the things like that were two 1930s Native American rugs that they just had a little rugs at like five and six dollars a piece. Well, they were good, good rugs in great condition. And I got over eleven $1 hundred dollars for the two of them within a couple of weeks. That's when I was selling on eBay every day. And so you understand what they will put where and what doesn't look right in the area. When you look down the row of towels or the row of blankets or the row of rugs, the ones that are better will stand out because they don't look like the mass-produced ones that most people donate. Thrift stores, by and large, just process household goods, the stuff of everyday life. I've talked about that a thousand times. The things of everyday life is what thrift stores thrive on. I mean, they, they process clothing and shoes and used furniture and Tupperware and dinnerware and all those things that we just change out in our lives periodically. And those are the things that they get the most of. And so you have to look for those areas that they don't see every day. Which brings me to point number two, which is no more than the pricer. Every thrift store, even the ones that are national chains, the person who's in charge of pricing only knows so much. And if you go regularly, you'll see the areas that they really like because they know, they know that that piece of pottery is worth $24.99 because they just know that. They know that's what it's for on eBay. That's what it is in the antique shops. But they may not know that uh, a piece of clear crystal. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm assuming dad is not, I'm assuming Stacy is not dad. Uh, hey, Tristan, thanks for watching, bud. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. So knowing more than the price is looking for the details that they're going to miss on those areas that they're not familiar with. And I'm going to show you a piece I bought just two days ago. Yeah, Wednesday. So going regularly, I go every, I try and go every week on Wednesday afternoons at 530 of a Rotary Club in Waldo. Uh, there are two thrift stores in the area. If I leave the office early enough, I can go to both. But generally, I can stop at one every week without fail. And this week, I stopped at the one, and I saw this on the new bin, you know, the stuff that was just coming out. And at first, I thought it was basically a, a urinal, you know, a, a, a hospital piece. But then I noticed that the lip is curved here, and then it's all hand-blown glass. I looked a little bit more closely, and I saw that right here, and you can see right there, it's got a stamp on it, and that stamp is Rydell. Well, Rydell is known for making wine accessories, and this is a wine accessory. It's a decanter. It's called the Escargot decanter. 
and on you know the new piece of places that sell this new it's between 300 and 350 dollars and i paid the i paid the whopping total of six dollars and 99 cents for this now we haven't decided if we're going to keep or sell it we'll probably sell it we don't have we don't have a lot of glass around the house with my sons tristan and william that we 13 and 17 but this will probably end up one of my future auctions and probably bring 100 to 125 dollars because somebody who knows what Rydell is is going to say, well, that's a $300 thing. If I can get it for 7,500 bucks, that's a great deal for them. And obviously a great deal for me. I paid $7 for it. With two boys in private schools, that extra $100 helps quite a bit between the food they eat and the tuitions, all the stuff. So these are the kinds of things I'm always looking for. Things that look like one thing or don't look like much at all, but have little details that distinguish it from other objects. They just saw a clear glass tchotchke. They didn't think anything about it being special in any regards, and they probably thought it was a bedpan because when it's sitting there first, that's what you think. Uh, and I kind of snickered when I first saw it, and I was like, wait a minute, the, that detail there, and then this is a pinch that's actually solid here. So I started looking, I saw that signature, and that's how I, that's how I knew immediately that it was a good piece of glass. <laughs> I'm not clumsy. <laughs> You're actually not clumsy, Tristan. Um, so look for the details and understand where your the, the pricers are going to be looking and what they're thinking when they're looking and processing thousands of items a day. They just simply cannot catch every little detail. So that's another thing to keep in mind is the details, learning what the, the pricers want, are, are familiar with, and what they're not. Uh, thanks for watching, Jeffrey, and you're welcome. Thanks for watching, Marla. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, go ahead and post them here, questions, uh, or share with your friends. The last thing I want to tell you is understand where you are, where the thrift store is that you're at. I bought this at a thrift store in the Waldo Brookside area here in Kansas City, which is kind of a, a higher scale, higher end neighborhood. And so you'll find things like a Rydell wine carafe there because the, the pl places that sell that are on the plaza or halls or Crown Center or down in Leewood at Leewood Town Center. You know the areas in your city, wherever you're watching from, if you're in Atlanta, it's Duckhead. If you're you know, in New York, it's in Manhattan. The places where the money resides, you'll find things like that, higher-end crystal and glassware and, and clothing items, things like that. If I'm out in the suburbs, like last night I was in Independence speaking at the American Legion Club about antiques and the state liquidation and distribution. If I had had time out there, I would have been looking at things, looking for different things uh, because of that area. I would be looking for higher end coolers because an expensive cooler is four, five, six hundred dollars. Uh, and you know, that's the kind of area where that could be donated uh, because of a life change. And the pricers may not understand how expensive a good cooler is compared to a lesser cooler or a sleeping bag or sporting goods. Understanding what makes uh, a sleeping bag worth three hundred dollars as opposed to a hundred dollars or fifty dollars new. Uh, could go a long way. So you have to understand the details of the objects. Study what makes, let's go and just look on eBay or go to the retail stores around you, go into Dick's Sporting Goods and look at the sleeping bags because they have a wide range or look at the, the rods and reels and say, this rod and reel package is $30. Well, you cannot make any money on that used at a thrift store. There's not enough margin there. But this one's $375 because it's a a great line or a higher end. If you see that in the thrift store, it's still going to be that same seven, ten, twelve dollars, maybe twenty-five. But if you pay twenty-five dollars for a three hundred and fifty dollar rod and reel, you can turn that around on Facebook Marketplace, on Craigslist, at a garage sale, on eBay, wherever you sell at, and you can make a lot of money there on something that just doesn't look like it's that important. Um, fountain pens, writing pens made by Mont Blanc. Look for those areas that don't look different than the normal counterpart, but subtle differences make a huge difference. And then on a deeper dive, uh, you know, Zippo lighters. There are a lot of Zippo lighters worth $10 and $12. Ooh, I've got an angry face there. But there are certain Zippo lighters worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So understand the difference of what makes, if you had 10 of them lined up, what's going to make one worth $100 as opposed to the rest that are worth $10. And you can make a lot of money at thrift stores because the price is not generally going to distinguish between those if they come in in a group especially. So those are my three tips. Go regularly, going every day, once a week, whenever you have the opportunity. You increase your odds drastically. Marla found six pieces of new matching red glasses mixed, 
mixed among other cheap wine glasses last weekend. Exactly, and Marla knew exactly what she was looking at there, and she's probably not going to sell those because I know Marla. She's probably going to enjoy wine out of them because that's what they're for, but she saved probably $30, $40, $50 per stem. And so all of a sudden, her, her, her kitchen cabinet, her china cabinet, the value of her estate, of her collection, just went up drastically um, even though it's still a used piece of glassware, she's going to be able to enjoy that. And when her daughters are time to re, to when it's time for her daughters to decide what they want to do with Bob's things, they have good quality there to talk about. As opposed to you know something made by Rydell is always going to be a quality good compared to a, you know glassware bought at IKEA or wherever else you might shop at. So going regularly. Uh, no more than the pricer and understand where the thrift store is and what objects could have value in that neighborhood uh, that would be overlooked by the pricer are probably the three biggest tips I can give you to make money at thrift stores. Thanks again for watching and uh, have a great weekend. Ooh, somebody was upset and somebody was upset. Uh, I'm sorry. We're just talking about taking, making extra money as a side hustle here. So Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Uh, late uh, Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully you have time to spend with family and friends. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and enjoy some time off to yourselves. We have a great auction coming up. Had a great time last night at the American Legion, uh, speaking to that, that group there and looking at their antiques and collectibles. And we'll be happy to talk to your group as well if you have any questions about having a, setting up a, a speaking engagement and appraisal event at your location. Give us a reach out to us. Otherwise, you can always post questions or comments here. If you're watching on YouTube, do the same thing in the comments below. You can always send us a direct message through Facebook. Give us a phone call at 816-283-3633. You can always drop us an email at info at kcauctioncompany.com. Info at letter, K, letter C auction company spelled out dot com. We'll be here next week talking about another interesting topic, and I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.